Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. I'm going to be starting off 2022 with an Indian whiskey, which you'll notice is going to be a bit of a theme this year. I'm definitely going to hit on some world whiskeys. So I'm actually excited. I hope you guys are excited. So I'm starting off with the Paul John Peated Select Cask. Now, Paul John is one that I've talked about quite a bit on this channel. I did the Nirvana. I did the 2020 Christmas edition. I did the regular classic Select Cask, which this one's delicious. And so I wanted to, you know, maybe not spend so much time on the distillery this time. You can check out some of my other reviews I've done up there if you'd like to. And I wanted to talk to you about this whiskey. So I will just say that Paul John is in Goa, India, and they've been making whiskey since 1996. They started making this particular whiskey in 2013. The idea being that they were trying to meet a flavor profile. Now, something that you'll notice about a lot of Indian whiskeys is that they're almost all no age statement. And there's a reason for that is the way that maturation happens in India because of the heat is way faster than what you would expect. So if you put an age statement on this thing, like even though this is a no age statement, it's basically like six to eight years. That doesn't look super impressive on a bottle, so they just skip it all together. And I think that's a good choice, personally. But let's go over a few metrics about this bottle of whiskey. This was first released in 2013, and every year they pick different casts to try to hit a certain flavor profile. It's 111 proof at 55.5% ABV. It's a no-age statement, but as I mentioned, that's pretty typical for Indian whiskey. It's matured in ex-bourbon barrels. It's 100% malted barley, non-chill filtered, natural color, the peat which I confirmed with the company, does come from the highlands of Scotland, and the MSRP is about $80. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing poured. So, as I've mentioned before, I really, really enjoy Indian whiskeys. It's some of my favorite whiskeys that I've had recently, and a lot of them do have kind of a tropical flavor, which I really like. I like the fruitiness that you often get in a lot of Indian whiskeys, especially you get some unique flavors. I mean, pineapples, papayas, guavas, all those random little tropical fruits. So something that's peated is a little interesting. Now, obviously, I've given this bottle some attention, uh, especially quite a bit of it last night, actually. <laughs> so let's go ahead and give this a nose. Now, the first thing that I'm noticing is what I would call kind of like herbaceous peat. You know, peat can be from multiple different things, multiple different sources. It can be from vegetation on land, can be from, I mean, it's all pretty much always includes moss. And then it can be from seaweed. It could be right on the coastline. It could be from really a lot of different things. It's just decomposing plant matter, right? So in the case of this, I'm thinking that this was very much dry kind of plant matter, not dry. This is plant matter that has decomposed rather than something on the shoreline. So I'm saying like a herbaceous or like a almost florally or or just vegetal peat. There's some classic bourbon notes in here. There's caramel. There's vanilla for sure. Um, no real oak, which is interesting because I would kind of expect that a little bit more, especially with the heat that goes on in an ex bourbon barrel in India. There's orange, and I'm gonna say this is kind of like an expressed orange oil. This is that smell you get when you kind of squeeze it over a cocktail. So it's it's pretty hefty with the, the orange. Um, and I mean, the peat, although it's there, it's, it is it is kind of light. It's a little surprising how un, like you see peated on the bottle and you're expecting to get hit in the, in the face, almost similar to like an Isla whiskey. So it's something to keep in mind that this is not an Isla, not all Islas are, what you know what I mean? It's not a high PPM type of whiskey. It's going to be on the milder side of what you're typically getting with smoke. All right, let's go ahead and give this a taste. Cheers. <clears throat> All right, so this is kind of a unique taste, especially for Paul John. It's something that I find actually a little surprising that they even do. Maybe it's just them spreading their wings a bit and kind of trying to broaden their horizons. But the first thing that I taste here especially keeping in mind peat, right? You're When you taste peat, you know, I realize I just went on about peat, but when you think about it, you could taste salt, you could taste that vegetal kind of plant matter, you could taste ash, you could taste cigars, you could taste all kinds of different things. Peat actually has way more variety than you would ever consider, especially when everybody just says it tastes like smoke, right? But, or ashtray. In this case, this tastes like barbecue smoke, like charcoal bricks, apple wood smoked something or other. But there's also this cool flavor here that is a bit surprising. 
And I, only thing I can really pin it as would be like a bacony flavor. Now I'm talking like crispy bacon. This isn't something that like you're not chewing bacon when you drink this drink, of course. But this is a salty and smoke, which reminds me of either the crust on a pork butt or bacon, um, something along those lines that is a bit surprising to, to taste in an Indian whiskey. Absolutely wouldn't have considered this at all to, to have been the taste prior to ever tasting this. Let's try another sip. Some of the milder flavors that you're getting in here, there's definitely some orange. There's cocoa uh, for sure. That's, that's very mild. Um, in fact, I'm getting it now, but I feel like had I not tried this before, I think it probably would have taken a few drinks to really get there. And then, Something I'm going to point out with the orange. So although I mentioned oily, kind of like expressed orange with the nose, the oil and the orange that I'm tasting on now is similar to like marmalade. And the reason I'm saying that is because it's very sweet. And, you know, obviously marmalade has kind of that orangey sweetness because it's made from a bunch of different citrus fruits. And then it's just a sweet thing that you put on your toast. And so I'm getting that, but it's very mild. You're going to have to dig deep for that one. All right. So here's the thing. Overall, I have kind of a different opinion than what you might be hearing out of coming out of me. Right. I always focus on the positives because that's I'm drinking whiskey. Right. I'm not doing a chore. <laughs> so when I drink this, I get some of these fun flavors and they're very unexpected. And I look at that as kind of a double edged sword, because not only are they not in line with what I was expecting, which I do note and I've pointed out before is a personal flaw when I am tasting. If something is very like completely different than what I'm expecting, I usually look down on it a little bit. Lack of, uh, I just, I don't always love it. So I had to get past that a little bit. So when I try this, I think about what is this whiskey for? This whiskey is likely to introduce people who are fans of Indian whiskey into peated whiskeys. And I think that's great. I think it actually does that. But the way that the peat smoke is on this is not, I guess I like a challenge in my peat. So I'm not tasting a challenge here. I'm tasting a subtle peat that has some interesting flavors that are mostly coming from the ex bourbon barrel. And when I think about the fact that this is an $80 bottle, that's a little off putting to me. Now I will say that this bottle is a 2019. This is from uh, August 3rd, 2019. So I did get this from the company. And, uh, you know, if you've ever, if you've ever doubted my honesty, they gave me this bottle for free and I'm sitting here telling you it's, it's not as good as I think it should be. Um, at $80, I just don't love this whiskey, but what I do think you should consider if you want to try a peated, uh, Indian whiskey is go almost a level down, try their edited, the Paul John edited. I think that is probably a better representation of what I think this could be. This is just higher ABV, and that's great. Usually it's a thing I love. Usually peat is a thing I love. For some reason, this doesn't do it for me. The barbecue smoke is interesting. The bacon is interesting. And those are kind of it. It's almost like it's not complex enough for me for $80, and I think that that's kind of where it is. Especially thinking about the other Paul Johns, like they all feel appropriately priced. And I've, I've drank a solid third of this, and I'm still not loving it. And I feel like had I bought this, I would have felt a little disappointed. I wouldn't have been upset, but I would have been like, yeah, I'm not buying that one again. And that's that's kind of where I'm going to put this. So I'm not going to give it an ignore it because I don't think it's an ignore it. I think it's a try it. I think this could be up your alley. It's not up mine. So we'll go with that. But let's see. Um, I have a, a thing I'm trying to do with the videos here. I did it a couple times last year, and I'm going to continue to do this. If you like this or would like to try things that are similar to this, um, kind of an easier entry entry would be the Highland Park 12. But then go for the Bowmore 15. <laughs> and for those of you who may have seen my short from yesterday, I uh, that's what I was smelling. That's why I was smelling the Bowmore 15. If you didn't see that, go back and rewatch that. Um, but Bowmore 15 or Highland Park 12. I think those will both be good replacements for this one if you'd like to try them. But let's see what you guys thought. 3% of you said to stock it, 5% said to buy it, 6% said to try it, 3% said to ignore it, and 83% of you, which is a new record by the way, have never had it. I'm not very surprised to see that so many people have never tried this whiskey. I just know that in general, Indian whiskeys don't do crazy on this channel. Most of you have still not taken the plunge despite me begging you to. So 
if you'd like to take the plunge, what I want you to do is go out and buy this guy instead. This is the classic select cask. It's also 55, well, 55.2. It's a 0.3% ABV difference, but buy this one. It is so good. It's so good. And it's exactly what Indian whiskey should taste like to me. I think Paul John knocked it out of the park with this one. So if you'd like to go pick it up, let me know in the comments what you thought. If you've ever tried this before, tell me if you think I'm off base. I definitely looked around at other people's ratings and people seem to be very on the fence. Like they either really didn't love this one or they really did love it. It seems strange how various it was and it really comes down to which sources you trust. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. I hope you have a great rest of your night and cheers.